If you're a regular listener of the comic book cast, then you know I have not been very excited for The Amazing Spider-Man, a film by 500 Days of Summer director Mark Webb that aims to reboot the only 10-year-old Spider-Man film series. Not that Sony wants you to know it's a reboot, billing the movie as The Untold Story. I know my theater was filled with plenty of confused little kids and old people in that regard. Right off the bat, this film had a number of things working against it, not the least of which being the fact that if Sony didn't make a new Spider-Man movie, they would have lost the rights to Marvel, Disney, and they sure as hell weren't going to let that happen. But all crappy marketing campaigns and underhanded studio politics aside, what did I really think of the movie? Well, it's okay. Not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be, but nothing that made me want to stand up and cheer either. The plot as it is plays out like a stretched out version of the 2002 movie. Boy gets superpowers, boy must balance new powers in personal life. Boy's life is rocked by tragedy, and tragedy propels him into putting on a costume and becoming a hero to defeat a friend-slash-mentor-turned-supervillain. You know, that story. Andrew Garfield plays Peter Parker, a radically different Peter Parker than what most moviegoers are used to. This Parker skateboards, talks back to his aunt and uncle, takes pictures of his crush without asking, and generally acts like a crappy teenager. Some people might say that this is a more realistic take on the character, but it never did it for me. I guess we're supposed to think it's the abandonment by his parents that make Peter the way he is, but that plot thread is never really resolved in the main movie. And honestly, the whole parent storyline has always been dumb. FYI, in the comics, they were spies, not scientists. They knew the Red Skull, hung out with Wolverine, and eventually were revealed to be robots. Yeah, kinda dumb, right? For what it's worth, this movie presents us with a much more tech-savvy Peter Parker, what was showing us him building his own web shooters like he does in the comics. The movie also puts a lot of work into showcasing where exactly the webs go when Spider-Man uses them. So if you're one of the people who got annoyed when you couldn't see how Spider-Man was swinging in the first movie, then you'll be happy. But if you're like me and didn't care, you will continue not to care. I will say, Peter Parker's love interest, Gwen Stacy, played by Emma Stone, is a great improvement over the comparably dull and lifeless Mary Jane from the other movies. She's smart, funny, and even kicks a little butt from time to time. That's why it's such a letdown when you realize their romance is so dramaless because it's love at first sight and never really manages to move past that. Gwen's cop father, George Stacy, was one of the other things I really liked about the movie. Dennis Leary really manages to be both funny and fatherly, rising above the stunt casting that this very well could have been. Also, in a weird way, he kind of has better chemistry with Gwen than Peter does. I personally would really have liked to have seen a movie from this guy's point of view, but hey, that's just me. Rice Effens plays Dr. Kirk Connors, a scientist with good intentions who takes Peter under his wing before eventually being twisted and corrupted by science. Huh, where have I heard that before? The Lizard was a real missed opportunity, in my opinion, and not just because the CGI is in gray. He's underwritten and flips from being a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde type villain to a let's make all of New York into lizard people because... because... for no real good reason. Amazing Spider-Man aims to be a funnier movie than its predecessor, while also trying to be more serious and cynical. This creates the movie's biggest problem, and that's in tone. You'll have a serious scene followed directly by a wacky game of basketball. As far as humor goes, I think I smiled more than I actually laughed, save for one side-splitting cameo. I think you know who I'm talking about. In closing, The Amazing Spider-Man is the definition of a mixed bag. Some of it works, like the big high school fight scene, and some of it doesn't, like the evil Indian guy who just kind of comes and goes, or the incredibly jaw-droppingly silly scene at the end with cranes. But I wasn't bored or angry while watching it, so if I didn't have to see it for an episode of the comic book cast, I could easily have waited for it on DVD.